This reaction is brought to you by my $5 or more patrons at patreon.com slash alexheights. I'd like to thank Identitech, TFG, Will E., William Myatt, Steve Aldersley, Kurt David, Jason Bates, at HotGirlVideo69 on Twitter, Mason Frost, Matthew McLaughlin, Andreas Glacel, Biff C., B. Jabber, and Joey Enough for sponsoring this video, supporting me, my family, the channel. I appreciate it immensely. I hope you all enjoy this video. Well, ladies and gentlemen... It is December 19th. We are going into Christmas week. Hopefully I'll have this out before Christmas. That's the plan. Uh, and then taking a little bit of a, you know, Christmas break, obviously. And I'll try to get back into the swing of things, finishing up the cure going into January. Um, I haven't recorded the Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me follow-up yet just because I've been busy. Wife was gone for about a week uh, visiting a friend, so I had to watch the kids, and then she came back, and now she's sick. So it's, you know, just life. Life has a way of just slowing you down, but that's okay. Um, so this is poll number 19 uh, has, has concluded, and it has concluded with Hex. Um, bark Psychosis is the winner here. Um, I have 26 patrons and only seven voted. So if you guys want to be able to, uh, contribute to these polls that I do every two to four albums, uh, head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Alex Heights. A dollar a month gets you access to, uh, vote in these polls that I do every now and then. Uh, and $10 gets you access to unedited reactions from Modest Mouse going forward. And this will be one of them. So if you want to see this unedited, uh, $10 a month, highly appreciated to have a few people at that level. Uh, so yes, uh, Hex, Bark Psychosis, um, post-rock. This is post-rock from 94. Um, apparently this is kind of the first place where post-rock, the term was kind of coined, uh, by Simon Reynolds, uh, in, uh, his review for the album in Mojo Magazine. Um, and I, I kind of see people talking about how this is, uh, like kind of carrying the torch, uh, over from, uh, talk talk. Uh, and when did Godspeed, uh, release F sharp, A sharp? Was that 99 or 97? That was 97. Okay. So yeah, that was three years after this. So this is kind of like a intermediate period, uh, of, of post rock, it seems, um, on rate your music. Classified under post-rock, ambient, jazz rock, and slowcore. All things I love. I'm very excited for this album. It was actually this and the uh, Live to Experience album were the ones that I was most excited for. I was excited for all of them. Um, but this one I've had my eye on for quite some time. It's just the, the way people describe it and the album cover. I'm like, this seems like something that I would really enjoy. So... I uh, don't really have anything further ado to say here. It's a 51-minute album. We have seven tracks that just kind of get progressively longer as they go on. So uh, let's just hop right on in with the first track, The Loom. Sorry, I don't usually interrupt music. Uh, I try not to anymore. Uh, but I'm just reminded I was looking at the the personnel for this album. Uh, and we have like we've got guitar, piano, melodica, uh, Hammond organ, bass. We have samples, uh, various percussion, vibraphone, flute, trumpet, violin, cello. Um, I'm like, yeah, man. That is definitely following in the uh, the post rock uh, the talk talk post rock vein. Got a little bit of down tempo vibe as well. All right, so um, I definitely get the uh, the jazz vibe. The jazz is in the percussion a little bit, um, possibly some other genres tinging that percussion as well. I'm really I always have a hard time 
identifying uh, genres for percussion. Because like um, ska, reggae, soul, R&B, rock, like they all have very specific types of percussive structures. And I'm always really bad at identifying what they are. Like when I hear them, I'm like, okay, that kind of... I can kind of see where that leads and like other music that I've heard that sounds like that, but I'm always have a hard time pinning it down, but definitely get the jazz element in there. Uh, when you combine jazz and ambient, you get this down tempo feel, even though this isn't quite down tempo. Um, yeah, I'm on board so far. I don't have a lot to say about that one. It kind of just felt like an introductory track. Uh, but I, I like how it sounds sophisticated and warm. Uh, like a lot of down tempo does, but like I said, this is not quite down tempo. Uh, so I'm eager to see where it goes next. A street scene. Fantastic. Uh, like that one a lot. Um, the That guitar at the end, that minimal guitar, very Talk Talk. Like, it's a lot of stuff that Talk Talk did on those two albums I've heard so far, which, uh, for those who don't know, I have done those two. I haven't, I've done Spirit of Eden and Laughing Stock. Love Laughing Stock. And uh, I will be doing The Color of Spring and Mark Hollis's self-titled, uh, like, three or four artists from now. So stay tuned for that. Um, I, I love bands that can accomplish this. Talk Talk did it, and Hex, uh, Bark Psychosis just did it here. Um, just, like, very intricate, like, sliding bass that is kind of doing its own thing. And then, like, a little chiming guitar that's doing its own thing and it's not really like a it's somewhere between like a melodic pop thing and like um art rock or experimental rock where it's like somewhere in the middle where it's just kind of like floating and sort of doing its own thing and a lot of tracks off of laughing laughing stock did that and uh it happened here and i just think it's really good it's really nice um i got some uh What's his name from Red House Painters? Mark Koslick. All right. Um, some of his slow core m- vocal deliveries I got a little bit from uh, Graham Sutton here as well on that track. But liking it so far. I'm digging it. I can see how this is like it's going into the early 90s. And you have that that slow core vibe of Red House Painters here as well as that minimalism that's very specific to those later Talk Talk albums. Um, this is kind of like a weird mix so far between the, the minimal starkness of Talk Talk and the minimal starkness of Red House Painters with that slow core stuff. Um, and I, I, I like that combination because like... To some degree, the slow core side is really dour and super introspective, whereas 
the post rock of talk talk is like i mean it's a lot in the themes of talk talk is a, it's a very transcendent kind of thing right there's a lot of spiritual imagery with those later two albums and that's what i like about this kind of post rock is it's not like you're just like thinking about like you know like you're wallowing in your own depression like you know bands like red house painters and low were able to do in the early 90s but um with with the talk talk post rock talk talk post rock uh kind of influencing this it's a nice combination of just enough introspectiveness while still having this kind of transcendent mysterious feel to it um and i like that absent friend our first long song eight and a half minutes let's go is that the melodica Quite good. Quite good. The weird, chunky guitar was like very much, uh, what was that song off of Laughing Stock that, uh, after the flood that had just like that screeching guitar note for a little while? Um, you're just like, how on earth did they achieve that? Like what combination of pedals and settings? Um, yeah, and I liked the, uh, I liked the simple back half of the track as well. Uh, very ambient. Um, yeah, I'm really liking this so far. Is it one of my favorite post-rock albums? Not quite, but, uh, you know, remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. Let's keep going. I want to keep listening. Uh, Big Shot. bit of vibraphone. I mean, like, it, it's it's sandwiched between two 8-minute, 20-second tracks, so it kind of felt like an interlude. Um, it wasn't bad. Probably on the same level as something like The Loom for me. Um, it, it's hard with post-rock uh, compositions because you kind of need them to have room to breathe. And when they don't, they almost kind of suffer for it a little bit. Uh, not to say that was a bad track. I just felt like it didn't say everything it could have. Uh, like if we go to Laughing Stock, how long are these tracks? Uh, New Grass is nine minutes. After the Flood is nine minutes. You're like 
Merman is five and a half minutes, but that's like, uh, sorry, I'm talking about talk, talk, talking about talk, talk, uh, so much, but I kind of have to, cause it's a very strong connection. Um, with Merman, it's a very minimal composition, so it can get away with doing very little. It's almost reductionist in a way. And so five and a half minutes is fine for that because it really only does like two or three things in that whole thing because it's so minimal and ambient. Whereas after the flood and new grass really warrant their length at almost 10 minutes. And that's why I enjoyed, uh, which was it? Um, the Absent Friend quite a bit. So maybe I'll like this next one, Finger Spit, because it's kind of on the longer end. And I, I tend toward those longer eight, nine plus minute long movements in, in post-rock music. So let's continue with Finger Spit. This is very talk talk. Each inside is upside down. This one I am highly torn on. <clears throat> on one hand, it just feels like copy-paste talk talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like, feels like a B-side or a throwaway from laughing stock. So, but like, but it's not bad. It's just as I hear it, it makes me wish I was listening to laughing stock instead. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton to say. That was just very much talk talk, uh, which, like I said, not a bad thing, but it's a little distracting when it's so closely mirroring mirroring something else that's very unique and specific. Because it's one thing to have like a pop band be derivative and emulate another pop band, right? Because it's like a lot of there's already a lot of derivativeness and copying going on in the pop world. It's the same chords all the time. But here, this is a very, like, La Laughing Stock, Spirit of Eden, a very specific sound, and they're doing it on this track. So it's kind of like, it's just making me think of Talk Talk a bunch. Um, and I don't think the composition is as good as, you know, things off of Laughing Stock or Spirit of Eden. Uh, but like I said, not a bad track. It's just a little distracting for me, I suppose. But what can you do? Eyes and Smiles, two tracks left. Uh, both of these are long. Eight and a half minutes and then almost 10 minutes. So let's keep going. Um, 
see, it's it's, it's tough with post rock because, like, you're meant to kind of zone out to it, right? Um, but like, there's a difference between like it being in the background and you being sucked into it. Like with Absent Friend, I think it was Ab- is a street scene or Absent Friend. I think it was Absent Friend. I got sucked into it. Um, like I was in the music. With this one, it was just kind of in the back while I was like thinking of other things. Um, not to say it was bland. It just wasn't as interesting as other tracks, I suppose. Uh, but I think it was still somewhat solid. Um, probably on the same level as like Big Shot and Loom for me. Uh, favorites so far, I think, are A Street Scene and Absent Friend, I believe. Anyway, one track left. Uh, Pendulum Man. Almost 10 minutes. Let's close this out. See what we got. This one's quite nice so far. And there is Hex. It's all done. Uh, That was, I think, the best track on the album. Uh, If I remember correctly, A Street Scene and Absent Friend. I think Absent Friend was my other favorite. I wish I could remember. Um, Yeah, I I really like that last one. Um, A a lot of... uh, I I can kind of see... that last one influencing Godspeed a little bit because it's like, it takes its time in building up a a theme or starting with instruments and slowly kind of crescendoing them. Uh, Although this, it just kind of like took a left turn and did something different. Uh, I I love the reverby Robin Guthrie-esque guitars in that last part, very mid eighties Cocteau twins, treasure and Victoria land, especially, um, very nice stuff. Hex bark psychosis. It is a good album. It feels a little disjointed. Uh, it's not super cohesive because it, it does a lot of different things. Um, upon first listen, it feels a little disjointed, but, uh, for those who don't know, I do follow ups to these, uh, reactions one to two to four weeks however long it takes and when I can uh, am able to record them after I listen to the album for the first time I'll kind of give a follow-up I'll rate all the songs and kind of explain how I feel about each one uh, so if you're not subscribed please subscribe uh, to uh, check that out when it drops um, because I feel like I, I will need some time on this one to kind of digest it a little bit I felt the same way about Talk Talk as well. It didn't really sit until I was able to like digest and process it. And now Laughing Stock is among my favorite albums of all time. I freaking love that thing. Uh, and this might do it. I'm not sure. Uh, there definitely are tracks here that I like more than others. Uh, but that's also kind of the case with Laughing Stock a little bit. Um, Absent Friend and Pendulum Man, I think, are the best ones here. Uh, the Loom is solid. The street Scene is solid. Big Shot is fine. Finger Spit, 
uh, like I said, distracting. Eyes and Smiles was okay, but it just felt a little, uh, what was the thing I said? It felt like background and not really something I could uh, dial into a bunch. But yeah, this was a, this was a pleasant album. Um, I wish it was a little more focused in terms of atmosphere because it started in like a slow core vein and then it leaned more towards the talk talk ambient uh, stuff later into the album. And that was kind of odd, but maybe uh, listening to this a little bit more, it'll kind of gel a bit better. Uh, it just felt like seven different tracks rather than an album, a post-rock album, if that makes sense. But it was nice. Stay tuned for the follow-up, and I'll, I'll kind of let you know how I feel when all the dust has settled. So, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Things to plug. Again, patreon.com slash I already said it, but a dollar a month gets you access to these kind of poll albums where you can vote to uh, choose what I listen to. Um, and then also the Discord. Link in the description for that. We have about 150 members, I think. We may have actually passed that threshold. Let me let me go look. We've been getting a lot of new new viewers or uh, new people in there. I don't know if it's from the, the song reactions or not, which I've been doing pretty much daily. Uh, I've been trying to get daily videos going. Uh, how many members we got? 146. We're almost almost to 150. Uh, music discussion, recommendations, tops or charts, memes, all the fun stuff. Uh, nice little community over there. And we have pretty much people talking every day. It's very nice. I'm very blessed to have a bunch of people kind of gathering around my, my videos and my content and enjoying it in that way. So very appreciative and grateful. That's all I got. Thank you all so much for watching. If this is before Christmas, I hope you have a fantastic Christmas. Uh, if not, I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, get out of here, you filthy heathen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, like I said, we'll resume uh, with Wish by The Cure. Uh, it'll be the final Cure album we'll do. And then we'll be going into Sonic Youth, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Bad Moon Rising, Eve All, Sister, Daydream, Nation, Goo, Dirty, and Washing Machine. Um, so we'll, we'll pick back up on that in the new year. And, uh, I hope you all have a fantastic holiday season and, uh, have a happy new year as well. And I will catch you guys uh, in the next video until then Godspeed.